Hi, welcome to part four in our exploration of Islamic art. Um, we are looking at Islamic art in Western um, and Central Asia. We had left off um, looking at um, some carpets and, and the, the sort of art of textiles, um, which is, you know, quite beautiful um, when we think about Islamic art. In this segment, we're going to be looking at illustrated books. Um, this will be a good leeway, too, in terms of back into um, European medieval um, art as well, because there's a lot of book illustrations and illuminated manuscripts that we're going to be looking at. So illustrated books were especially important um, art form in Iran from the 14th century to the 16th century. They flourished during a cultural revival that took place under the um, Ikhanids, um, um, which was part of the Mughal dynasty, which ruled Mesopotamia and Iran um, from 1258 to 1336 CE. Um, the Ikhanids were the descendants of Genghis Khan, or Gen sorry, Genghis Khan's um, grandson, Hulu, who conquered Iran in 1258 CE. They ruled as foreigners in a conquered land, and they enjoyed the power of words and images to support their right to rule. The Ikhanid court um, commissioned luxurious manuscripts as didactic, and didactic means um, sort of to learn or to teach. Um, so didactic works of art in which they identified themselves um, with kings and heroes of Iranian history, primarily those of um, the Shoshanama, um, or Book of Kings. Um, and we're looking at um, a page right here. So the Shah Nama, or Book of Kings, um, this was the most popular illustrated text of the period. Um, and basically, it was an epic poem written by a poet, Abu Qasim um, Ferduasi. And I know I'm butchering these names, I apologize, in about 1010 CE. Um, in the Shanama, um, the author recounts the myths, legends, and early history of Iran. We can interpret the text as a series of adventure stories and romance, but also as a guide to ethics. So this is where sort of the didactic element comes in, a chronicle and a manual um, for royal conduct. Um, there are 10 surviving illustrated um, Shanama manuscripts, um, datable from approximately 1300 CE to 1350 CE. Um, a scholar, Robert um, Hillenbrad, has noticed a concentration of the illustrated Shanamas during the first half of the 14th century that may be attributed to the Akhenid's desire to adopt this powerful symbol of Iranian kinship for their broader educational or propagandist mission. So there's that word propaganda um, in terms of maybe themes that we kind of explore um, in relation to some of um, the art um, works that we're looking at. Um, this folio is, uh, is from a celebrated copy of the text known as the Great Ikhanad um, Shanama, um, one of the first most complex masterpieces of Persian art. Because of its lavish production, it is assumed to have been commissioned by a high-ranking member um, of the Ikhanad court and, uh, and produced at um, the court scriptorium. Um, so a scriptatorium is where scribes worked, and again, these these books um, were very were considered very much luxury items. It was almost like you know in today's terms, buying like a a brand new car or even a house, or you know they were that expensive. And so a scriptorium, there were different scribes, and they had different jobs. So you know when we look at a page an illuminated manuscript, chances are there are many various scribes or many different scribes worked on it. It wasn't just um, the work of one particular person. Um, the 57 surviving illustrations reflect the intense interest in historical in the historical chronicles and the experimental, experimental approach to painting of the Akhenat period. Um, the eclectic paintings reveal the cosmopolitanism and that's sort of like this idea of urban, you know, this sort of urban or metropolitan um, um, adjective of the Ikhanad court in um, Tabriz, which um, teamed with merchants, missionaries, and diplomats from as far away as Europe and China. Here, the Iranian king um, Bahram Gur wears a robe made out of European fabrics. 
um, to slay a fearsome horned wolf in a setting marked by um, the conventions of um, Chinese landscape painting. So we haven't looked at um, um, Chinese art yet. Um, so this is probably a piece that we will go back and sort of reference and, and compare and contrast. Um, but, you know, that's um, one of the themes, too, is a sort of idea of cross connections and, and cultures, you know, trading with each other. And, you know, so not only trading goods, but knowledge and, and obviously different artist techniques, um, which is demonstrated in this, um, in this page here. I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. So in addition, it, um, the painting is, is very influenced um, by, you know, European painting as well. I mean, I, I do think we sort of have these um, sort of figures that are reminiscent of some of the Byzantine figures and then eventually some of the um, uh, medieval um, figures that we're going to be looking at when we head back to Europe. Um, so it's interesting to see um, those two elements, um, definitely with the patterning um, in particular. Um, the book, um, uh, um, the Book of Kings, um, contains about six thousand verses, um, and so here we can also see, in addition to the, the beautiful illustrations, the the beautiful calligraphy work as well. All right, we're going to look at another um, manuscript page um, from um, the, the book um, of Kings, but um, for, made for a different um, patron. So um, the Shahnama of Shah um, Tazmat, which you're um, looking at here, um, also known as the Shahnama um, Yi Shahi, is arguably the most luxurious illustrated copy. Um, of the epic ever produced in the history of the of Persian painting, um, it um, um, its pages with outstanding measurements for an illustrated book, book approximately 48 times 32 centimeters, are made of fine paper enriched with large gold sprinkled borders um, and lavish illuminations um, accompanying the 759 folios of text written in superb. Um, um, is called a nastalik, N-A-S-T-A, apostrophe L-I-Q script, which is a type of calligraphy, um, are 258 paintings of exquisite quality and artistic originality. This project was realized as the royal um, altler in Tabaz, um, the first capital of Safad, of the Safid dynasty from 1501 to 1736, and involved two generations of the most renowned artists of the time. Among them was Sultan Muhammad, um, Mir Musavir, and Akka Mirak, who succeeded each other um, as um, directors of the project throughout the years. Scholars still disagree about the actual dates of the execution of the manuscript. Um, it was begun around the early 1520s, probably under the Shema Ismala, um, who reigned from 1501 to um, 1524, the founder of the dynasty and carried out at least another 20 years under Shah um, Tazmas. Um, the manuscripts um, did a key uh, and principal sponsor. Um, and that's how you should identify it. Um, the artistic importance of this manuscript cannot be overestimated. It is considered one of the highest achievements um, in the art of books for its superb calligraphy, painting, and illumination. <laughs> From a pictorial point of view, it also marks the synthesis of um, the two most important phases of the Persian um, art tradition. Um, the Turkmen style, um, which developed in um, Tabriz, <laughs> I'm sorry, Tabriz, I've been saying it wrong, T-A-B-R-I-Z, um, and um, Sh um, Shiraz, and then uh, a Turmerid style, T-I-M-U-R-I-D, associated with the Harat. Um, these two strains were absorbed into the new artistic idiom um, of the early Safids. Thus, the lively treatment and bright color of landscape inspired by the Turkmen school 
coexisted with the more somber palette and balanced compositional layout of the Herat school, um, whose impact is particularly evident in some of the later paintings. Um, the fight against, and so what we're looking at is the fight against the obscure forces of evil. Um, they're personified here by a horde of multicolored um, divs, D-I-V-S, which is demons, um, was among the most challenging tasks of the early kings of Iran. Um, Tahmura, who became known as the Div, was the ruler who succeeded in subduing them. In order to have their lives spared, um, Divs promised to teach man the, the precious art of writing. This is how mankind learned various alphabets, including Arabic, Chinese, Greek, Persian, and um, 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 Sogdian. This extraordinary painting, which has been um, attributed to um, Sultan Muhammad, reveals the, um, the, the sort of experimentation that characterizes the work of Persian artists in this period. In addition to some foreshortening, we can see with the horse and the depictions of figures in perspective, um, which um, was probably imitated um, looking at Western examples. Um, the imagery of um, divs in this um, manuscript witnesses remarkable changes when compared to past illustrations. They become progressively um, anthropomorphized um, um, by means of explicit um, sexualization <laughs> and incorporate traits of demons of um, Central Asian origin, which we know were circulating on both silk paper in the Royal Library um, at Tabriz. Let me zoom in on here too. You know, um, but again, you can kind of see these different demons, and um, you know, I guess um, they have been sort of um, more humanized by the inclusion of <laughs> maybe genitalia um, on on these figures as well. But it's quite whimsical as well. You know, the landscape and. You know, definitely some illusionism with the foreshortening and the turning of the rider on the horse, but you know, definitely not in in the way we think of like when we think of Greek and Roman illusionism, but still quite beautiful and charming. And again, the beautiful text. And here you can see sort of the gold flake um, in the page as well. All right, my apologies, I got some works mixed up. So actually, I had mistitled um, this particular page um, um, from the Book of Kings of Shah um, Tazmup. Um, this is actually Tamuras defeats um, the Div, so the, the demon. So I apologize. Everything else I said is correct. Um, this is the elimination though, that um, is, is in your 200, list of 250 works um, for the AP College Board. Um, and, and this is the proper title, I apologize. Um, so this page depicts the first king of Persia, um, Gaimuar, enthroned before his court. Um, his son is seated to his left and his grandson is standing on his right. Um, the, artist, um, and is the artist implied through the composition the concept of succession. Um, the left side is favored. However, the reader would know that the ruler's son was murdered. Um, lending a tragic theme to this illustration. Um, the entire picture was made um, to show harmony between nature and humans, um, which adds to the tragedy of the, of the story. Um, so this copy of the Shaname was made for Shah Tazmak um, of the Savid dynasty in Persia, which is present-day Iran, um, and it was well known by contemporaries. It was presented by the patron to the Ottoman Sultan Salem II. So let me zoom in this one so you can you can see. Um, oops, technical difficulties here. So again, you can really see this um, really intense, um, beautiful um, illustration um, here with all these figures and this sort of lush, um, veget you know, vegetation and, um, and floral landscape. It's it's quite spectacular. So, um, um, I will go back and make sure I have um, these numbered. Um, so, this this particular page you don't have to know, but this one you, you do. So, these two pages um, 
from the Book of Kings. Um, and um, anyway, so we are going, we're done with um, Western and Central Asian um, Islamic art. We're going to be um, traveling in, um, to another um, part. Um, we're going to be in India, um, and we will start looking at the Taj Mahal, so stay tuned.